Before you move on to your first assessed exercise, I wanted to talk to you about a few things and give you a few tips before you start. First of all, I want you to know that this sheet should be completed um, before you show it to me. So you should have the crow quill pen techniques completed and then all six of the cubes for the, with the micron completed as well. If before you get to this sheet you would like to practice any of the techniques, I do have some little squares of paper with cubes printed out on them for you to practice with. Also, if you do this sheet and you're not happy with something that you did, you could complete a new one on one of these squares, and then I would just ask you to position it and tape it over top of the one that you are replacing it with on this sheet. So for instance, I'm not very happy with my crosshatching on this sheet. I could replace it with this other crosshatching that I did at some point and just tape it over top of this sheet. And then once I completed the remaining six, I would be able to show it to the teacher. Okay, some other things I want to talk to you about is just like use of your ink, cleaning supplies, making lines, techniques, etc. Okay, so you want to make sure that you get your India ink out of the cabinets all the way to the back right corner of the classroom, the green faced ones. In there is where the India ink is and then I also have some dip pens and the crow quill pens in there as well. It's helpful to have a container of water at your seat just in case you need to rinse out your pen while you're working with it. Sometimes what happens is the ink will dry inside of the pen and then the ink will no longer flow out the tip. It's best, I think, for you to just swish it around in some water and then wipe it clean and start out fresh. Make sure that you keep your ink on some paper towels. That way, in case you drip from the bottle, it's going on the paper towels. At the end of class, if there's any ink on your desk, I need you to wipe it up with a wet sponge. Um, sometimes you need to do this multiple times if you have a really big spill. Um, once you wipe it up the first time, there will still be like an inky residue afterwards. So it's best if you clean out that sponge, wipe it up again, and then wipe it dry with some paper towels for the next class. Okay, when you're working with your crow quill pen, make sure that you have some um, scrap paper with you. Um, make sure that you're dipping your pen in not too far, just above that little opening. And then I hold my pen so it's kind of resting on this middle finger. My um, pointer finger sometimes helps to control the direction of the pen, and then my thumb helps to control the pressure. Remember that when you're pulling your lines, you want to make sure that the nibs are the prongs of the nibs are running parallel to each other. You can get away with um, doing this sometimes. You just don't want to press too hard um, if you're holding like a pencil because what will happen is it will squirt and that makes it near impossible to be able to control the weight of the line by adding pressure and then lifting up. So just keep that in mind as well that um, it's best if you're pulling it so the nibs um, prongs are parallel. If you're making a really long line at any point, you won't really have this happen on the exercise, but um, if you're making a really long line, it's sometimes easier to start the line, have a little break, and then continue the line. If you're stacking lines like this, you can do that. Just make sure that the breaks and occur at different spots. Um, this just makes it a little bit easier. Um, it also makes it, if your line is starting to go crooked, you can correct it that way as well. Um, but sometimes if you're doing a really long line, you can only pull so far with your wrist before you need to kind of readjust. So you can leave breaks in it. It won't be obvious. It will just be subtle. It will look fine. So that's an option. If you're making lines that are stacked, okay, like hatching, and you notice that all of a sudden they are starting to go a little crooked, this happens, just like when I write on the chalkboard, it starts to go a little crooked. What you don't want to do is you don't want to abruptly correct it and make the lines go level again. That will look really obvious. Instead, you want to just gradually start to straighten them again. Okay, so that was not so gradual. But you want to make sure that you gradually are starting to straighten them, as opposed to abruptly straightening them, because then you'll end up with kind of like a zigzag effect and it will be really obvious. So that's just something else that you should be aware of. At the end of the block, what I expect you, or when you're done working, I expect you to take the nib and wipe out the excess ink with a paper towel. Please only wipe away from the point this way. Don't wipe back and forth. What's gonna happen is you're gonna get the little hairs of the paper towel stuck in the nib, and then the next person who's going to use it is going to have a lovely hairy line while they're drying. So please make sure that you just are gently wiping it like that. If the ink is not totally coming out, you can swish it in some water and then wipe it again. If the ink is still being pretty stubborn, what you can do is you can go to the same cabinet that the India ink is in and take the pen and dip it in the bottle of pen cleaner, swish it around, 
and wipe it off, or you can take the paper towel, dab some pen cleaner on the paper towel and wipe off the, off the nib as well. Um, if you need to, these do come apart. It usually takes some finger strength to pull them apart. This one is not coming apart for me today. Um, but if you feel like you need to really give it a good cleaning and kind of get up inside of the pen holder, you can usually pull them apart and then clean out that whole area. Just make sure everything's nice and dry before you put it away. When you store the dip pens, please put them nib side up. If you put them nib side down, they will get bent and damaged. So please take care of our tools in here so that way they're good for you to use later. And then of course, always make sure that your India ink gets capped and um, the cap is you know, tight but not too tight and placed back in the cabinets. All right, I think that's about it. It seems like you are ready to move on to your first assessed exercise with the Crow Quill pens. Good luck.